hello 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 welcome to my channel today i'm going to show you how to create this cute cow cake topper i'm using saracino modeling paste and magic colors gel colors so the body is 35 grams of white modeling paste which i've rolled into a really short sausage shape and then i'm using my finger to rock back and forth to create a groove down the center those two lumpy bits on either side are going to become the legs so i'm now using the handle of a modeling tool so any tool or paintbrush will do for this and i'm splitting that little lump in half and then using my fingers to kind of stretch and pull the paste to become the individual legs. It's best to do this slowly rather than just pinching and yanking on the paste because it's just going to like potentially tear or just get too thin at certain points. So you want to gradually pinch and then roll it between your fingers to make sure you're keeping the paste round because obviously cows have round legs, not little kind of square pointy things. And then you can use a modelling tool to split the paste a little bit further up into the body just to increase the length of the legs. I'm also going to be patting the ends of the legs just to flatten them off and square them a little bit so that again they don't end up as points. Then you want to go to the opposite side of the body and repeat this again to create the other legs. You may have noticed that I keep patting the model with like a little bag of white powder. That's corn flour in a nylon bag and I'm using that to stop the paste from sticking to myself and itself and just everything in the universe really. Working with modelling paste when you've got it in your hands like this so much really starts to warm it up and it does start to get very sticky. So having some corn flour around just to kind of dry it off and stop it from kind of sticking to itself and everything else is really a good idea. See, there you go. There it is. <laughs> just caught it at the end of my little little waffle there so i'm just at the moment just stretching out the legs making sure they're all even so we've got four even sized legs so he's going to stand up properly on his um legs yes and i'm now chopping the ends off just to make the base of the legs nice and even so that when i add the hooves on they go onto a nice smooth surface so that's the model from all directions so you can kind of see what it's looking like next thing you want to do is push in a little bit on the back legs so that the bottom is slightly more protruding than the legs so in other words we have a cow with a very large booty and there's me stroking it so you can see the curve of the shape there so for the markings on the cow i've actually mixed some white in with some black to make a very dark gray colored paste taking small balls of it and i'm gently pinching and teasing out some little kind of splodges from the edge of that ball doesn't really matter how many splodges you kind of pull away from it each one should be different so that the cow isn't a uniform or the splats should I say aren't a uniform shape you want to add some character so make them all different sizes and make different shapes um, once you're happy with the shape then pop it onto the model you shouldn't need to use glue if you're using saracino paste but if you do add a little bit of glue and then start to pinch and stretch the paste so it kind of blends in with the rest of the white paste then continue that and just add some little splodges wherever you feel like it over the body so my first splodge is on the base of the spine at the top of the bottom and I've got a small one that's running down the back of the back leg and then I'm going to put one, this is on the chest of the cow so that it's got something that shows from the front of the model and then just adding a small one onto the side so you can see they're all different sizes and different shapes it just kind of adds a little bit of extra decoration to your model and that was a view around so you can see what it looks like now we're on to the hooves so i've got three grams of that dark gray modeling paste which i've divided by four and then i'm rolling them into little cylinder shapes and then narrowing one end of the cylinder paint a little bit of glue on the bottom of the legs and attach the narrow end of the cylinder to the legs give them a little pat once they're on just to make sure they are nice and attached then you can use the dresden tool to press down and create that little uh, line in the hooves and what it's called a cloven hoof is it um, so it's just a little bit of extra detail next up we're on to the head and I've got 23 grams of white modeling paste for this which I've rolled into a ball and then narrowed out one part of the, the top part of the ball ever so slightly then I'm going to add another one of my little splodges on there so that's going to be going over the right eye so it's to the right side of the ball there and then using my fingers just to blend that in and neaten it up for the snout I've got 1.4 grams of white modelling paste which I've coloured with bazooka pink by Magic Colours, really nice pale pink colour and I've shaped that into kind of a jelly bean type shape and attached it to the bottom half of the face. Now again I'm not using edible glue, um, if you need to then please go ahead and do so. If you want to make your own glue you can use one part tylo powder to 30 parts cold boil water, give it a mix and leave it overnight and by morning you will have a lovely glue. I've just added a small piece of paste underneath to create the bottom lip and now I'm going in with a ball tool and just pushing it in and then upwards to create a slightly oval opening for the nostrils. Use a ball tool to add two shallow wells on either side and up above the snout so just 
push the tool in and then I'm using my fingers just to smooth it out just so it's not quite so obvious that I've just pushed a ball tool into the poor cow's face. Next we're going to be adding in the holes for the actual eyes and I've got the Squire's Kitchen small ball tool but I'm using the large end of that tool pushing it in and rocking it up and down to create an oval opening for the eyes. You'll have to let me know if you're enjoying me talking more during these tutorials rather than less talking and a little bit of background music. I'm trying something new now um, so it actually works out easier for me when I'm recording this to just waffle on because that's like my natural um, talking style I guess and I do struggle with the the shorter kind of sections and getting the words right because I do stumble over my words quite a lot. Um, I guess I should go back to the tutorial. So I filled the two eye holes with two balls of white modelling paste, flattened them against the face with my fingers, used a small ball tool to add a hole on the inner corner or inner side of the eyes, and then filled that with two small balls of black modelling paste. Next up is the eyelashes. So I've got two extremely small balls of black modelling paste, which I've rolled in my palm into fine little sausages with tapered ends painted some glue around the upper and sides of the eye and I'm just using my glue brush just to fit them in. Now with the glue brush I've used it to paint glue and then wiped off most of the glue on the back of my hand, you just saw me do it there, and then used that to fit the paste around the eye. The reason I do that is because the paste is very very fine and delicate so a plastic tool will just squash it and the paintbrush is absolutely perfect for this job. Just make sure you wipe off the excess glue otherwise it's going to get into a ritty, ritty? going to get into a very sticky mess. If you want to make a lady cow, then add a small flick of the black icing on the outer corner of each eye to look like an eyelash. Now we're moving on to the ears, so I've rolled a small cone. Um, the ears are 0.7 grams of modelling paste each. Um, rolled a cone, flattened it ever so slightly, and then I'm pushing the wide end of the Dresden tool into the paste to kind of flatten it out and create an inner ear. So I'm just painting a little bit of glue here because the paste of the head is starting to dry out a little bit before attaching the ear with the narrowed or the inner ear bit facing inwards towards the head. And then you can play around and kind of make the ears look however you want them to. Um, cow ears, by the looks of it, tend to be quite droopy. So that's kind of the look we've gone for with the ears there. I'm now adding a highlight to each eye. So I've got two small balls of white modelling paste and I've just painted a little bit of glue and then picked up the little ball with either my finger or a paintbrush and attached that to the eye before flattening it down with my finger just to make sure it is stuck. Now, whew, going on, we're onto the horns. So I've got 0.5 grams divided by two and I've used kind of a beige color modeling paste. I think it might be chestnut by um, Sugar Flare. And I rolled it into a cone shape, trimmed off the wide end so it's got a nice flat base and then attached that to the top of the cow's head. That was a high pressure moment. I didn't feel like I was going to catch up with myself talking so fast. Um, so now I'm moving on to the hair. He's got a little fringe, this cow. So I've got one kind of slightly larger ball and two smaller balls of white modelling paste, which I've rolled into long cone shapes. And then I'm going to attach them together with the longer one or the bigger one in the centre before I putting that onto the top of the head and then having it sweep over the left side of the forehead. Now, when I put this on, I did squash it a little bit. So I'm using the Dresden tool just to put the lines back into the paste again. We've now finished the head. You might want to leave this to set for a couple of hours before you attach it to the body because we need to push it over that cocktail stick. And the last thing you want to do is squash it as you're pressing. So I pushed a cocktail stick into the body and then added a little bit of edible glue before pushing the head down over the spike, which seemed really quite cruel. <laughs> when you actually think about it. So now moving on to the tail, and I've got a small ball of black of the dark gray modeling paste, rolled it into a sausage, but make sure to keep a small ball of paste on one end. That's gonna be the end of the tail. And I'm just pinching that into a little pointed thing. A little pointed thing, yeah, technical term. I'm now pushing a ball tool into the back of the model and then painting a little bit of glue inside that hole before inserting the tail. The reason I'm doing that is because it helps the tail to stick to the body and you end up with kind of a nice join between the two. So the final piece is I'm going to hide the seam between the head and the body. I've just got a piece of dark grey paste and I'm just adding that to cover the seam, making it look like another piece of the little splat cow print texture that you've got on the rest of the model. I'd suggest leaving your model to dry before you add this piece of paste on because you don't want to squash the rest of the model as you are working. I've dipped my Dresden tool in a little bit of edible glue and I'm using that to blend the seam between the latest splat pattern and the old piece that was on the body we made earlier. 
I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you will find lots of other cool things and hopefully more tutorials in the future. And for now, I bid you goodbye and I will see you next time.